This lesson in the series for SQL Fundamentals looks at the SELECT clause. Uh, for this lesson, if you want to work along with the examples, you will need to have an account with the Microsoft Enterprise Consortium. You get this account from your instructor. You would log in to the MEC and open up the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. I'm logged in and I'm opening up the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. So you will connect to the database and you need to identify your database, not the example that I have here, which would be for my account. We'll work with a couple of databases, AdventureWorks, and we'll only work with a portion of AdventureWorks. This is provided by Microsoft. Uh, what we'll do is work with human resources and we may pull in information from a person table which is in the person schema or container within this database. We'll also work with student teams. This is a database that you created in your account in a previous lesson in this series. You might want to print out the data models for each of these databases so that you have that in front of you when you create your queries. The SELECT clause is by far the most commonly used SQL statement. We'll keep it simple for now and just add the FROM clause. So we're going to use SELECT, column name, comma, column name, comma, so forth, FROM, and then table name. The angle brackets in this syntax example indicate words that would be changed depending on what it is. You actually want to see what column names actually exist and what the table name is. You don't necessarily have to have the semicolon after the command if you're doing a single command, uh, but it is the standard way to terminate an SQL command. I'd recommend that you keep your SQL commands in a notepad file so that you have an ongoing record of the examples you've followed in the lessons as well as the assignments that you've done. So we're going to open up a query pane and again using notepad I'm going to copy paste in uh, my queries and we'll start off by taking a look at the teams and looking at team ID and team name in the, in the column names from the team table. So I'm going to open up a new query pane and then I'm going to paste in the command and then I will hit execute. And then I see the uh, results in the bottom portion of the screen. And this looks like what you see here in the PowerPoint presentation. So we have the team ID and team name being displayed. The next thing will be to look at the student table and some of the data there. So I'm going to return to the database. I'm going to go ahead and create a new query screen. Uh, eventually we'll start adding a series of commands within a single query screen, but for now I'm going to simply add a new, new query screen and paste in the command for the the student data that shows student ID, first name, last name from the student table and I'll execute that. And again, that will be essentially what you see here in the PowerPoint presentation. Now we can query the uh, Teams table and show all the columns. This is a very common way to list data. If you have a lot of columns in a table though, this is probably going to be uh, it's going to give you more output than you want to look at in any one query. But select asterisk is a way of saying display all columns without having to individually list the columns. So let's take a look at that. And so we see all the columns. Now let's take a look at some of the data from AdventureWorks. Let's list the uh, 
departments in AdventureWorks, but because you did not build AdventureWorks in your own account, you will have to provide additional information when you want to work with this data. So we'll have to provide the database name, the schema or container name, and then finally the table name. So this is a fully qualified table name that shows the database, the schema, as well as the table name. And so we see the results of the data from the AdventureWorks database. Now we'll look at information about shifts. Again, notice we do the select clause with the column names from and do the database name, the container name, and then finally the table name. And we execute that and we get information about shifts. There are three shifts, day, evening, and night shift. One last thing that we'll look at here, and this is very useful, is to look at how many rows are in a table without actually seeing the data in the tables. So you can do a count function, count parentheses with an asterisk in the parentheses. So we'll take a look at how many students there are. And we see that we have 15. We'll look at how many records there are in the employee table of AdventureWorks. And we see that there are 290. So what we've covered in this lesson is the select from statement. Uh, we looked at select asterisk as a way of seeing all the columns from a table and we've used the select count function uh, to display just the number of rows within a table. We've also looked at how to identify a table in a different database in a different schema.